When quoting a measured value, it is important to ensure that the units you use are relevant to the problem and consistent with any regulatory or other general measures of importance so that a meaningful comparison can be made. This is true for simple measures, such as a distance, or a mass, or a length of time, and especially important for derived measures, such as mass per unit volume, i.e. density. Let's start with a simple measure of distance. Consider the value 4646 millimeters. This sounds like a large number, but whether this is the case depends on what is being measured. If it is something that you expect to be small, for example the length of a grain of rice, then this is a large value. If it is something you expect to be large, for example the height of a tall building, then this value, although sounding large, is in fact quite small. In fact the value represents the length of a car. For manufacturing accuracy, you may design your car to be 4,646mm long, but a more relevant measure would be to state it as 4.6 meters. Cars are used to transport people, and people are 1 to 2 meters tall, so a car is a few times longer than a person is tall. A car that is 1 meter long would obviously be a small car, while one that is 10 meters long would obviously be a large one. Now let's look at a derived value, such as mass per unit volume, i.e. the density. Consider three liquids that have densities of 1000 kg per meter cubed, 0 0.001 kg per centimeter cubed, 1 mg per millimeter cubed. These may all sound like widely different values, but they are in fact all the same. They all give the density of water. Notice how the size of the measure can be made to sound large or small depending on the units used. For a given measure, if you use a small unit of mass divided by a large unit of volume, you make the number large. For example, using mass units of micrograms and volume units of meters cubed, the density of water is 1 trillion micrograms per meter cubed. If you use a large unit of mass divided by a small unit of volume, you make the number small. For example, using mass units of tons and volume units of millimeters cubed, the density of water is one billionth of a ton per millimeter cubed. Now let's look at a radiation related example. A UK citizen receives a whole body effective radiation dose at a rate of 0 0.2544 microsieverts per hour from average background radiation. Is this normal, a high dose rate or a low dose rate? To judge this, you must convert the units to those generally used for regulating radiation exposure limits. Firstly, let's convert the time unit to the year. A dose rate of 0.2544 microsieverts per hour gives a dose of 2,230 microsieverts over a year. About half of this dose comes from radon gas. There can be an additional dose from artificial radiation, the majority of which comes from the use of x-rays in medical procedures. The additional average dose from this component is 420 microsieverts over a year. The total average whole body effective dose per year then is 2,650 microsieverts. This sounds much worse than 0.2544 microsieverts per hour. However, this isn't the unit used in regulation. You should use millisieverts, not microsieverts. Doing the conversion, 2,650 microsieverts per year is about 2.7 millisieverts per year. This is the average dose in fact received by a UK citizen in a year, so 0.2544 microsieverts per hour is the average naturally occurring dose rate. How would you feel if you were placed in a location where your dose rate was 5 microsieverts per hour, i.e. about 20 times the dose rate of background radiation? Most people wouldn't be comfortable with this, but most people actually do place themselves in this situation on a voluntary basis. You do it every time you take a flight and reach an altitude of about 36,000 feet, for example over Manchester when travelling from Glasgow to London. The point here is that a derived unit, such as a dose rate, can mislead unless the per context is explained. Yes, the dose rate is 20 times higher than background at 36,000 feet. However, you spend a relatively short time flying compared with the time you spend on the ground, so the accumulated dose is less. The total dose from one 4-hour flight is about 20 microsieverts. 
This is less than one one hundredth the total dose received every year from background radiation. The actual dose you receive offline depends on your latitude. Five microsieverts per hour is typical for a latitude equivalent to Manchester. In general, it reduces as you fly towards the equator and increases as you fly towards the poles. For example, a flight over the Gulf of Arabia might typically record a dose rate of three and a half microsieverts per hour. When going on a flight, you might also undergo a total body or X-ray backscatter scan as you go through security. This device can deliver a dose rate of 24 microsieverts per hour. This is four times higher than the dose rate at 36,000 feet and 80 times higher than the background dose rate. Are you comfortable with this? The answer again depends on the time spent in the device. A scan takes up to 15 seconds to complete, and 15 seconds represents 1 240th of an hour. So the total dose is 0.1 microsievert. Remember that background radiation gives the average person a dose rate of about 0.3 microsieverts every hour, from which you can't escape. In Cornwall, the dose is about three times higher than this, so the extra dose from a whole body scan is the risk equivalent to the extra dose of an average UK citizen spending 10 minutes in Cornwall. Also, remember that the units used can alter the perception of whether the dose from the scan is large or small. 0.1 microsievert from a scan sounds small. However, if you use nanosieverts, then you can report the dose is 100 nanosieverts, which sounds much larger if you don't take careful note of the unit used.